Hello everybody, today I'm going to talk about the solution to another CSS problem, a problem that was suggested on the blog I posted on Codeforces a few days ago, and this problem is polynomial queries. This problem is a data structure problem, as it is present in the range query section, and we have to maintain, maintain an array of n values and process a bunch of queries, so we either increase uh, the values on a range a, b by 1, 2, 3 and so on or to calculate the sum of values in range a, b. So at first glance we can do this problem by using uh, a standard segment tree and then update each value one by one by 1, 2 and so on but the problem is that with this approach it will be way too slow and there is no way we can make this work because uh, the time complexity would be n times q times log uh, n and at this point it's better to just do the update in of n by keeping prefix sums so this solution is not uh, ideal however we can see that we can apply just like in many other problems that uh, involve range updates we can apply lazy propagation and the way this will go, as you will see in the solution I describe, is that it will be very similar to how we approach in general lazy propagation problems. And this will help us get uh, the answer by just modifying a few things in the process of computing the sum. So let's now talk about how do we want to perform the update. So let's say that we have a segment tree. I will represent it as a tree even though in reality we will store it as an array and we want to update values on an interval so we want to get that increasing sequence on an interval so the point is that as we do this uh, we will do the uh, same thing we always do when it comes to lazy propagation so the idea is that uh, let's say we have to update so this is one index so here we have the leaves and of course, uh, as I usually do in segment trees or in general when I implement uh, algorithms, I use one index. So this is the node one, two, three, and so on. So for example, uh, we want let's say we want to update the range to six, and we want to update it. So on two we will have one, on three we will have two, on four we will have three, and so on. So we will perform this update in a very similar fashion to what we have in the segment trees when we do the lazy propagation so we go here we also go to each children once again to each children here we won't visit once since it's outside of the range but we will perform the update here and we will get we will give this the value we will need we will talk about the process of giving the nodes the values they need a bit later on here the same thing for 3 4 and we are done and here the same thing for 5 6 so so far we covered these three uh, nodes each of them including one of the intervals that correspond to an interval that's inside 2 6 so now we cover this part of uh, the process of updating uh, updating a vertex now the hardest part by far is observing what we need to do in order to uh, properly compute the sum of the values we update because after if we figure this out finding the answer to a query is very easy it will be just like any other lazy propagation problem you've ever solved before so let's say we have uh, let's say we have this 2-6 uh, update let's say we also have something that intersects up to some point so 4 7 let's say we have 4 7 so the reason why i chose to these two intervals is because they have the interval 4 6 that is present in both of them so i want to show you how we deal with this update so whenever we do the 4 6 so we will be going through a very similar set of nodes except uh here we will only visit uh, this side of the tree and subsequently we will also visit this side of the tree now now we will have from here a value that will be equal to 3 because of the first update and we also get a 1 from the second update 
So given that it's now a leaf, it's very easy to just add up 3 and 1 and say that here we have a 4. So we have here a 4 and these ones also have uh, at the same time just 1 and 2 because of the previous update. Now what we do with 5, 6? Because we will also go here, here, here and also here. So the endpoints of the updates would be uh, this one now, this one as well as this one. So the hardest part as you will see is what we do when we merge the uh, updates we have here. So on 5.6 we already have an update for which we are going to store the sum of the values as well as the first value that was there. Uh, actually the first value and the length of the increment. So at first we would have something like 4, 5. And given that it's just one update, the increment is one. Now we will also come and get an update that contains uh, this interval from here. And since it's interval 5, 6, we will get 2 and 3. Now how do we merge these? Actually, the information we already have in terms of storing the uh, first value as well as the increment is enough because now we can whenever we merge two intervals we can just add up these first values and also add up the increments and thus we will be able to get that we actually have in fact an array that has a progression of two so six eight if we were to extend this we would be ten and so on and the magic of this is that it actually uh, doesn't take too many lines to implement as you will see in my lazy propagation routine, it's something I only uh, do it using a few code lines and it's also fairly easy to develop. So at the same time, it's also very useful in terms of uh, practicing, uh, let's say coding, maybe a segment tree struct or a segment tree class. So it can be used in a lot of ways. So uh, now that we cover this, uh, let's move on to the implementation phase. So I solve this problem, so I'm going to mostly show my solution, but also have you all go through the idea itself. So uh, this is a segment tree class I recently created. It is on my GitHub repo in the competitive programming section. You will have the link in the description, by the way. And uh, so basically here I process the input and I first build the segment tree. It's a, it's a standard build function, so uh, I don't do anything uh, different from what you might, might have seen in other people's codes. But the most important part is dealing with the updates and the queries. So something very important I often do when it comes to implementing updates and queries in lazy segment trees is to always call the lazy function whenever I enter a node. This allowed me to never have any issues with uh, not keeping the updates properly and it's also way more reliable from my experience of having used in many contests in my life. I've used this kind of logic for at least 20 times and it always worked very well. So I recommend this kind of approach for you too. Now, as I said, the most important part is dealing with the lazy propagation. So in lazy, in this lazy part, I have a pair of two values. So the first value will be the uh, first value of the uh, the first value of the uh, interval of the interval we want to increment and the second value will be the increment I've aforementioned before because whenever we merge multiple intervals we also want to merge the increments and in order to update the sum of the node now that we know the first value and the increment we can say it's just a generalized Gaussian sum where if we know the first value and the length we can derive something that's like the uh, sum of Gauss where we, it's a variation of the sum 1, 2, plus 3 up to n and we can adapt it to having a given start, a given uh, length and a given increment. As you can see implement, increment is just uh, a factor here whereas everything else here is just how you would do it with a normal sum. And when it comes to updating the lazy propagation nodes we will just uh, we will just add up the first values as well as the increments and this is just enough but we need to also be careful about going to the other side of the tree as we also need to 
take in account that everything that goes to the left side has to be considered only by that left side. So we will also need to update this with a product between the increment and the length of the left interval. Again, for update and for the query, we just need to add up the nodes and this is fairly similar to a standard symmetry logic. So as you can see from here, we managed to solve what is supposed to be a very difficult problem with just uh, storing uh, a bunch of information that's uh, very useful. Now, it when I first saw this, it took me a few attempts as I was a bit uh, careless about uh, the part where I do the updates. But once I uh, used paper and I figured out what I need to do, it all came fairly easily. But this problem, it's actually uh, quite an underrated one in terms of, let's say, solve counts. As even though it doesn't have many solves, I actually recommend it a lot for the sake of uh, getting yourselves used to the paradigm of lazy propagation. Because it's uh, a problem that uh, if you solve it and you manage to get it cleanly, you can say that you know almost anything you need to know in order to solve a lot of data structure problems from a knowledge-wise perspective. It's also something fairly often found in Olympiads as well and also in many ICPC contests. So there are lots of ways you can uh, use this in order to solve problems and get uh, better data structures. So. This was the solution for polynomial queries. I tried to make it as uh, simple as possible to explain. And it's also a solution that uh, can be explained in roughly 10 minutes. So uh, if you enjoyed watching this video, please like the video, share uh, it with, with your friends and with others you know that they do competitive programming. And also subscribe to my channel as it helps me a lot to make more of these videos and also any kind of feedback is appreciated as I want to do more videos during this year. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have learned something new thanks to this video and see you next time. Cheers.